2025 is almost over, and it's been an incredible year for Parkinson's research, from new treatments showing real promise to breakthroughs in understanding how the disease works. There's genuine reason for hope as we head into 2026. Hi, I'm Kim. My mom had Parkinson's disease, and together we lived through all the ups and downs, the highs and lows of the journey. I spend countless hours every week reading through Parkinson's research. You know, clinical trials, new treatments, medication reviews, etc. And I try to translate all that complex medical information into language that actually makes sense. I do this because when my mom was first diagnosed, this is exactly the kind of clear, honest information I was searching for, and I couldn't find it anywhere. Okay, so today I'm counting down what I believe are the top five most exciting Parkinson's research developments of 2025. These aren't just lab discoveries that might matter in 20 years. These are real advances that are already changing how we think about and treat Parkinson's disease. Okay, ready? Let's look back at 2025. Coming in at number five, GLP-1 drugs, medications like Ozempic and Wegovy. They're showing potential protective effects for Parkinson's disease. Now, you probably know these drugs as weight loss medications, but in 2025, we saw compelling evidence that they might actually slow Parkinson's progression. Okay, so what does the research show? A large study published this year looked at people with type 2 diabetes who were taking GLP-1 medications. Those taking these drugs had significantly lower risk of developing Parkinson's disease compared to those taking other diabetes medications. Why does this matter? Well, these drugs seem to reduce inflammation in the brain and might protect those precious dopamine-producing cells that die off in Parkinson's disease. These drugs are already FDA approved for other uses, which means if the Parkinson's benefits hold up in, de in the dedicated trials, um, these could become available relatively quickly. But we still need clinical trials specifically in people who already have Parkinson's to see if these drugs can slow progression, not just prevent the disease. Those trials are being planned for 2026. My take on this? Well, I actually did a video on this topic earlier this year because I think it's one of the most exciting developments we've seen. The fact that we might be able to repurpose an already approved medication for Parkinson's, to me, that sounds huge. Now, the same theme of protecting brain cells shows up again in our next breakthrough. Breakthrough number four, vitamin B3 continues to show promise in clinical trials. This is a topic I've also covered extensively on the channel because the research is so compelling. Vitamin B3, specifically a form called nicotinamide riboside, helps cells produce energy more efficiently. So what happened in 2025? Multiple clinical trials continue to show that B3 supplementation might help with both motor and non-motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease. We saw improvements in fatigue, energy levels, and in some cases, even mild improvements in movement. Uh, this is exciting to me because vitamin B3 is incredibly safe. It's not a drug with serious side effects. It's a vitamin. And unlike many Parkinson's treatments that only help with symptoms, B3 might actually help protect brain cells. We need larger, longer trials to confirm these benefits and figure out the right dosage, but the early results are encouraging enough that many neurologists are comfortable discussing B3 supplementation with their patients. My take on this one? This is one of those things where the risk is very low and the potential benefit is real. I covered this in detail in one of my most popular videos this year, and I'm watching the ongoing research closely. And while approaches like vitamin B3 focus on supporting brain cells, some of the most exciting work in 2025 went straight to the heart of what causes Parkinson's in the first place. Now, before we continue, I want to quickly mention something coming in January. Starting January 7th, I'm launching a comprehensive three-part series called Understanding Parkinson's Disease. If you're newly diagnosed or caring for someone with Parkinson's, this series will give you everything you need to know what Parkinson's is, all the symptoms that doctors don't always explain, and how to live well with the disease and with treatment. If this sounds helpful to you, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Okay, now we're at breakthrough number three. Major advances in targeting alpha-synuclein. 
That's the protein that clumps up in Parkinson's disease brains. There are a couple of Parkinson's vaccines currently in clinical trials that target alpha-synuclein. I've done a video about that, and it's super exciting. You can watch that one later. I'll have a link in the description. And remember my um, upcoming What is Parkinson's series I just mentioned? I'm going to explain how these clumps of protein called Lewy bodies are toxic to brain cells. In 2025, we saw real progress in developing drugs that can reduce these clumps. So what happened this year? Several drugs. Uh, so what happened this year? Several drugs designed to prevent alpha synuclein from clumping, or to help the body clear out the existing clumps, move forward in clinical trials. One drug in particular, prazanuzumab, advanced to phase three trials, which is the final stage before potential FDA approval. If it does get approved, I sure hope they change the name. The name. If it does get approved, I sure hope they change the name. It's very difficult to say. Okay, so this is different because most Parkinson's medications just replace the missing dopamine to help with symptoms. These alpha-synuclein drugs aim to actually slow or stop the disease itself. That's disease-modifying treatment, not just symptom management. And that's big. If phase three trials go well, we could see the first disease-modifying Parkinson's drug approved in the next few years, and that would be transformational. My take on this one? I'll be doing a dedicated video on prazanuzumab and these alpha-synuclein targeting drugs in early 2026, because this is where the real game-changing potential is. This is about changing the course of the disease, not just managing symptoms. And once we better understand what drives Parkinson's at the biological level, the next critical question becomes, how early can we detect these changes? And that brings us to breakthrough story number two. Major progress in detecting Parkinson's earlier, sometimes years before motor symptoms appear. This might not sound as exciting as a new drug, but early detection could absolutely be crucial for future treatments. So what happened in 2025? Researchers identified better biomarkers, which are the measurable size of the disease, in blood and in spinal fluid. They also refined tests for things like loss of smell and REM sleep, debate and REM sleep behavior disorder, which can appear up to 10 or 20 years before diagnosis. There's even work on a skin test that can detect abnormal alpha-synuclein in a simple skin biopsy. Why does early detection matter? If we can identify Parkinson's in its earliest stages, we have the best chance of slowing it down with future treatments. Once you've lost 60 to 80% of dopamine cells, it's harder to make a difference. But if we could intervene when you've only lost 20 or 30%, that could change everything. So what does this mean for you? In the future, people with early signs like loss of smell or REM sleep disorder might be able to get screened and potentially start protective treatments before they ever develop a tremor or any other symptoms. My take on this, this is the kind of behind the scenes research that doesn't make headlines but could completely change how we approach Parkinson's in the next decade. And while early detection may change the future of Parkinson's care, 2025 also delivered something powerful we can act on right now. And number one, in my opinion, the most important finding of 2025 is blah, da, da, definitive proof that exercise actually slows Parkinson's progression. We've known for years that exercise helps with symptoms, but in 2025, we got the strongest evidence yet that exercise might actually slow down the disease itself. What the research shows. Multiple studies this year showed that people with Parkinson's who exercise regularly, and I mean exercise, at least two and a half hours per week of vigorous activity, have slower disease progression than those who don't. Brain imaging studies showed that exercise might actually protect the remaining dopamine-producing cells in the brain. It's not just about building muscle or improving balance, which is amazing. It's also about protecting your brain. Why I chose this for number one? Well, basically because you can start doing this today. You don't need to wait for a drug to get approved. You don't need to enroll in a clinical trial. You can start exercising right now and potentially slow your disease progression. I think that's great. Uh, what kind of exercise? Well, the research shows the best results with 
vigorous aerobic exercise, fast walking, cycling, swimming, activities that challenge balance and coordination like dancing, tai chi, boxing programs, strength training is huge, but the key is consistency and intensity. You need to work hard enough to get your heart rate up. My take on this, if I could go back and tell my mom one thing when she was first diagnosed, it would be exercise is medicine. Make it non-negotiable. Do it every single day, no matter what. Now, my mom did exercise, with, especially through her physical therapist, and I did see the difference that it made. But I wish we understood earlier just how crucial it was. I think it could have really impacted the quality of her life. This is the breakthrough that should change how every neurologist counsels newly diagnosed patients. Exercise isn't optional. It's an actual treatment. So those are my top five Parkinson's research stories from 2025. And here's what I'm watching for in 2026. Results from those prazenuzumab phase three trials. More data on the GLP-1 drugs in Parkinson's patients. New early detection tools becoming available. And hopefully, continued proof that lifestyle interventions like exercise really do make a difference. The field is moving faster than ever before. We're not just managing symptoms anymore. We're working toward actually slowing and maybe one day stopping this disease. I'll be covering all these developments as they happen, breaking down the research and telling you what it actually means for people living with Parkinson's. Remember, starting January 7th, I'm launching that comprehensive three-part series on understanding Parkinson's disease. Part one covers what Parkinson's is and the main symptoms, the motor symptoms. Part two covers all those non-motor symptoms doctors don't always explain very well. And part three covers treatment options and living well with Parkinson's disease. If you're newly diagnosed, or if you're a caregiver, or if you just want to understand the disease better, that series will give you the foundation you need. I have a question for you. What research development are you most excited about heading into 2026? Drop a comment below. I read every single one, and I try to comment on them all. If you ask a question that I don't know the answer, I will try really hard to find the answer for you. And who knows, your comment may become an idea for my next video. Thank you for being here, and thank you for trusting me to help you understand this disease. Thank you for all the support you've shown my channel in 2025. It just blows my mind how many people are watching these videos. I hope I'm helping some of you. So I know this stuff can be overwhelming, so I really appreciate you taking the time to learn along with me. If this was helpful, please share it with anyone you know who is dealing with Parkinson's disease in any any way. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. Take care of others, take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next one.